Hey, what's up, awesome dudes? Welcome back to No Man's Sky Beyond. Today, I'm going to bring you guys a guide for the industrial and power generation in this game. This is a brand new feature that has been introduced with the Beyond update. It might be a bit complicated at first, but trust me, it's actually quite easy. And we are going to go over the basics as well as a little bit of a advanced stuff later on into the video. So let's start things off. And of course, if you enjoyed this, a thumbs up would be super appreciated. And let's get started. Now, of course, before even beginning to think about building stuff and power generation, you will first need to go to the construction research station on the Nexus. Of course, you can probably go to other places. I'm pretty sure there's one on the space station and I'm pretty sure you can also access this same feature using the base computer. But today I'm going to showcase it to you like this. And we're specifically going to go into the industrial module section because this is what is important. And in order to get this, you will need salvage data and you get this on planet surface it's actually quite easy all you need to do is just farm for a bunch of these and you will have to unlock everything in here in order to be able to even build this so start with the electrical wiring and then move on to the switches the extractors the everything else the power generators and so on and we're gonna go over all of this in just a bit as well as exploring their functionalities but I want to purchase a few things in here as well anyway here we are on our base I've tested a few functionalities here and there I'm going to showcase to you everything that you need to know. This is like more, a little bit more complex stuff. But in the meantime, let's begin with the basics. So now everything in your base, including the base itself, from now on will always require electricity. You will need to power it up in order to benefit from anything inside of it. If you want to have the lights, if you want to access the terminals, everything inside of it will have to be powered up. And you can even see that I've already done so. I've powered up this structure over here. So uh, let's begin with actually the first two elements you need to keep in mind and I will have to go into the tech section of this specifically into the power and industry um, section of the build menu so there's two things that can generate power for you there's actually only two deployables that can do that first we have the solar panel and then we have the biofuel reactor. Each one of these has advantages and disadvantages. And I'm going to start things off with the solar panel because this is just straightforward. So the solar panel is going to be what you will want to use at first because the solar panel doesn't require any fuel, of course. All it requires is a source of light, in this case, the sun. Of course, I wanted to showcase to you during nighttime because, well, during nighttime, the solar panels will not function and even tells you how much time there's left for the dark hours in this case six more minutes until the sun rises but until then what if you don't have a source of light what if you still want energy well here is where the biofuel reactor comes into place because this one has the advantage of running 24 7 it runs around the clock as long as you have a source of fuel to put inside of it in this case organic materials so carbon or anything of sort i'm on the creative mode so it's really easy to recharge this but it does require quite a lot of carbon so what it does is that it uses the source material in this case the carbon and it converts it into electricity that is pretty much it so let's showcase that in action right around here let's say i want to power up this structure over here this structure right now as you can see it even showcases and indicates that it doesn't have a source of power so you will need to use the wirings that I was talking about in order to make a connection between these two so I'm going to go into the connection I'm going to go into the wirings and then just connect both of these and as you can see they have both lighted up you can see that being indicated by the green lights and if I create a door and go inside of it something like this I can go here and the lights are on. Even if I put something inside of it, it's going to be powered up. For example, let's say I want a portal device over here to always be able to teleport. And if you put it down inside of it, it's going to be powered up because it is inside of a structure that already has a source of energy. But if I take this cable down, something like this, all the lights go down and both of the sources now show that they are lacking current. They don't have any energy, so of course you will need to have these tied up to one another. But let's say all of your base is now pretty much lighted up and you kind of have excess power to run. What you want to do from here is to 
place down a couple of batteries. My base here is a little bit more complex. I've set up a bunch of solar panels. These will work during the day. As you can see, they don't work currently, but during the day they will open up and follow the sun wherever it goes, collecting energy. From here on, I've connected all of them between each other so that they all share the same, you know, energy source. And from there on, I've made one single wiring connecting to these batteries. They are all passing that energy through this wiring in all of these batteries because also these batteries are connected with one another. And from this battery on, you can just connect it to your base or to whatever contraption you've built, having the source of energy, the source of storing the energy, and then pass it on to whatever wants to use it. But let's now jump into something a little bit more complicated that we have kind of struggled on one of the live streams, and that is of course the wiring and the switches. The switches over here are quite numerous. There's a number of them you might question yourself what is even this how does it function and it's actually quite easy so it's just like how it works in your room currently and just to give you a quick example this is the structure that we built before and let's build something that requires us to use energy so for example in this case let's say i want to make a source of light so the source of light of course requires energy to function and uh, it needs to be connected to one of those so if you pick the wiring and connect it straight to the battery, it's really easy, it opens up, it lights up, and it just works. But what if you want something a little bit different? For example, let's say you don't always want for those lights to continue running, because they use electricity, it's not really ideal. Well, here is where the switches come into play. So going into the switches, I'm going to start with basic ones. This is the wall switch, the most basic of the switches. You connect the wiring to the switch and from the switch to your device. And now the switch is up, it's running, it lets electricity to pass through it, but if I press it, it turns off the light and it will only work if you turn it back on. Pretty simple, just like in your room. But this isn't the only switch that you have in the game. There's actually multiple of these and there's a lot of interesting stuff that you can do with them. So let's go back into the switches and this time around go for something like, let's say a proximity switch. This is something that I've used to automate a lot of stuff. So again, connecting it to the power source and back to the light itself. The thing about this is that it detects your proximity. So if I go away from it, it turns off the light. If I go near it, it does pretty much the same. It powers it up. That is it. It powers itself off. And this pretty much goes unrestricted. There's a 360 degree area around it that makes it function. So you don't have to put it on a wall. You can even hide it as you will soon come to find out. So if I go from this side, for example, it functions the same and it powers that thing up. But the next switch that I want to showcase is the power inverter. So I'm going to connect back to the source of energy and from here on you will have both of these pretty much uh, left unconnected. So I, what I can do here is connect it once and it will power up just like your normal switch. It will continuously keep it powered up. But check this out what happens when I connect both of these ends back to the source. That is right. It now alternates between no current and current. So it alternates between having electricity and not having it at all, which is pretty easy to notice because one of these just connects back to the source of power and the other one, one of them brings electricity to the device, the other one takes it away. So it just alternates like this. You can make it flash. Pretty similar to that heart over there, though that one is a little bit more complex. So let's test all of these devices in just a little bit. Of course, I've built a couple of contraptions over here that work pretty nicely. So this is the first one and let me showcase what happens when I walk in front of these. So this again is proximity activated lights and I just walk around them and they all light up like this, blinding me in the process because I don't know how to turn off this effect on the PC version. But how does this function, you might ask? Well, let's turn it off and show exactly what I did. First of all, I've placed these lights one by one. 
Right back on their side, I've placed down a bunch of proximity activated switches. Now the switches are each connected by one single line. I've started from this one, connected to the second, and if you follow the thread, you will see that they are all connected with one single line. So, you know, it's for the sake of simplicity. From here on, each of the switch is connected to one row. So the first switch, the first box, to the first row, then the other row, and each of these rows are connected by one single line. You don't even need to use more than one line for this, just for the sake of simplicity. And from here on, I've connected the final switch, because it pretty much connects all of the other ones, to this this is the wall switch basically. The reason I've connected this one is so that it's not always powered on. From here the toggle switch is connected to this battery which itself is then connected to all of these solar panels. Let's go to the second one. This is a little bit more different. It kind of uses the same principles but not quite. So this is one of the power generators. It runs into this power inverter. And this power inverter is only connected with one cable to the outer white layer. So what this means is that it's always powered on. The other power inverter is connected with both of its ends, so it alternates between electricity and no electricity, which means lights are turned on and then turned off alternatively each second. Except this one is connected to this other uh, battery, which itself is connected to this bunch of solar panels, but the principle is still the same. Source of power, cable, switch, lights. That's it. And as you can see, the outer layer stays like that, while the inner layer intermittently turns on and off. Now this isn't where it all ends. We still have the industrial section. And as you can see, we have quite a few of these. We have a mineral extractor, we have a gas extractor, we have a supply depot, we even have pipes that we just purchased from the Nexus. So how do you find a source of minerals, a source of gas, or maybe something else like electricity and all that kind of stuff? Well here is how you do it. You first need to go into your multi-tool and build a survey device. This is paramount because this will let you detect your sources. And once you enter in your scan mode like this, there's going to be a new button that you can use to activate survey mode. And each planet has one source of, for example, let's say energy, materials, or gases. In this case, this is a source of energy and it points me out to that direction over there, 176 or 5 units. But now since we did that, let's also showcase how this works, for example, if you find a source of minerals. So again, doing the same process, I found a source of minerals on this planet. So the source appears to be here, right in this very spot. It also indicates that this is a potential C-class mineral. Unfortunately not an S-Class, but I cannot complain. From here I'm going to go into the industrial section and build one of these mineral extractors, or maybe even two, but for now only one is going to be enough. Furthermore, I'm going to build a, let's say, a depot somewhere around over here. I'm going to have to power both of these up somehow, but I'm going to put it really close to one another and also connect them with one of these pipes. The pipe goes really easy over here, not sure if you can see it from the grass itself, but this is how it works. All of this needs to be powered up, by the way, so let's build a bunch of sources of power. So yeah, now that it's done, let's take a look at what happens. The mineral extractor is extracting paraffinum. This will take roughly one hour for one full stack, so 58 minutes left until a full stack gets done, and uh, it can hold up to about 1250, which is only not that many stacks. You're gonna definitely run this really quickly, especially if you forget it on a planet. That's why you need a supply depot where you can store all of this and also extract everything in it. So the best course of action would be to build several of these supply depots and they would all have the source material transported to them via the pipeline. And the more of these you build, the more you will need, the more energy they will consume. So it depends just how industrial you want to go, just how big you want to go. But yeah, this is pretty much it. This is all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it was informative. Let me know down below if you have any other questions. In the meantime, of course, a thumbs up on this video would be super appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell and I'll see you guys next time.